Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and we are back with another quick, hopefully, um, <laughs> okay, it's probably not going to be quick, but here we are, um, but another ornament cover design and I kind of wanted to design this one on the fly using the uh, American Chainmail uh, aluminum sampler that I highly recommend even if you don't weave chain mail this is not sponsored by the way you guys um but even if you don't weave chain mail if you're just like making jewelry and you need jump rings for adding charms or adding a little bit of variation to your piece or incorporating with your wire wrapping or putting clasps on your bracelets or necklaces or anything like that or maybe getting into chain mail because it's lots of fun um but it's just it's a really great like what 25 bucks I think I don't know don't quote me on it um because there's no telling when in time you're watching this and the price may have changed but totally worth it uh just to kind of get some experience with different ring sizes that you can then go further and uh you know shop if you're, it's like oh gosh because clearly like I use this ring size a lot that's a 16 gauge 1 4 inch so I would know that's the size when I go shopping um to look for that size and a lot of chainmail rings have become at least if you're shopping on like the ring lord or chainmail joe or american chainmail or some uh like blue buddha boutique i think are they still selling chainmail but a lot of the sizes have become kind of standardized um so hopefully uh, that would make things a little bit easier uh, for you whenever you're ring shopping but Let's go ahead and get started. I am starting with the 16 gauge 7 16 inch, and these are standard wire gauges. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is in millimeters, guys. Sorry, give it a Google. Um, or the ringlord.com has an excellent PDF uh, reference for stuff like that. But we're going to be joining it with, let's try joining it together with, we could use the 18 gauge 1 8 inch kind of doubled up. Uh, that's kind of small though. I don't think that'll give us the space that I want. Because we want the rings to be able to be joined together but still have a little bit of movement. So maybe, oh those are way too big. Maybe the 18 gauge 5 30 seconds. Let's try those. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my bent nose and tapered flat nose pliers to just close 10 of these 18 gauge 5 30 seconds inch rings and I'm going to be using them to um, join these five rings into well a ring which actually I think I might have to do six rings just to get it to fit around um, the top of the ornament. So, whoops, well, throwing rings, watch out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think 10's gonna get us, like, I don't think we can get away with 10. I really wanted to do five little charms hanging down, mostly because that's all I had of them, but I guess I could try to find a sixth one. That'd be all, like, snowflakey and cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Crap, how do I make six things be equidistantly hanging from eight? Oh, bother. <laughs> it might be easier to just do five from ten, perhaps, but then it's going to be so huge looking. <laughs> so this is this is how I design, you guys. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it. Like, having a plan is so nice, but, uh... Here we are. Well, first let me go grab an ornament, I suppose. Okay, so this is the ornament that I'm using and we're going to want to make sure that we have enough rings that we can come around. Like full circle around that. And also I think we're gonna cover making a better hook as well. So I have this candle holder that I'm going to be setting our thing in, our ornament bubble. And so as we close some of these smaller rings, let's actually zoom in a bit so that hopefully you can see what's up. So as we close this, we 
want to make sure there's no little pokey bits and that it looks like an invisible line. And then we'll open one of our large rings and I'm actually going to hook four of the closed rings onto it. There we go. And we'll close our large ring and then move two of the rings to one side open up another large ring, hook through the two. So now we're just making a chain. And there's one closed. Let's close another one. There we go. And then close the big one. And before somebody gets all up in my comments being like, um, actually, this isn't real chain mail. It's like, yes, we all get that, but um, the techniques remain the same. So opening and closing rings, let's not get, let's not be gatekeepy. You know, somebody has to start their first chain mail project sometime. And something like this might be a lot more approachable than making a fully riveted, uh, you know, steel, you know, ring armor or whatever folks like calling it. So <laughs> just uh let's not be pedantic pedantic i don't know engagement's engagement though if you feel like leaving a snide comment go ahead i suppose <laughs> if you must but that being said i really feel like this is a very good beginner project for if you're just starting to get into chain mail you want to build up your ring plier coordination um, or maybe test out weaves, but you don't want to do like an entire bracelet or an entire necklace. You can totally test out different ring sizes and stuff, make a small project like this perfect for giving away as a gift or putting up on your shop or um, just keeping. <laughs> uh, so you can see we're just continuing along because a lot of chain mail is a feat of Honk goes the train. Now that's exceptional. They're really laying it on. I hope everything's all right. That's weird. Um, <laughs> so what were we saying? Um, I don't remember what we were saying. Do 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 do. So we're just continuing along here. And I'm going to do, I'm going to use this, one, two, three, four, five. Could five fit? Let's see. No. A five will not fit. It looks like we're going to need at least seven, possibly eight. Okay. So just test fitting. That's all right. Ah, um, chain mail is a feat of endurance. A lot of the time um, the weave itself might not be super complicated it's just gonna take 200 hours you know or something like that depending on the piece that you're looking to do and so um, I think tackling smaller totally approachable maybe not technically chain mail <laughs> um, projects it is a really great way of building up your endurance building up to being able to complete a big project and so that's just my take on it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments because I do love hearing from y'all. And so we're gonna hook through these two, add on two closed rings. and hook on well let's test fit it again because whichever ring is our last we don't need to add the two extra because we have them on our first ring yeah that looks good and so we want to make sure that there's no twists in it in the way that way our rings can lay flat you know we could have gotten away with just six it'd have been a little too tight though like it had been cramped I still kind of want to try it. I just want to try it. We can always we can always take rings off or add rings on, but I just want to try it and see. 
let's actually zoom back out just a bit. I don't mean, I never mean to be wandering out of frame. And so we'll join that around. And then we can put that on there like that. Oh, it's still, okay, well, it fits, but it's a little snug, but I think it'll be, I think we can make this work, you guys. That's going to be really cute. Let me go rummage and see if I can't find a sixth one of these charms. Okay, so I couldn't find any more of these charms, but I was like, well, I could do three of one type and then three of another if I want to stick to the Celtic knot motif. Or, I could totally use these snowflake charms. I think they're just the cutest little things. I love the detail on them. I love that they're double-sided. Um, so I think I'm actually going to be using the snowflake charms. But that's such just a stylistic element with this that it really doesn't matter. You could have anything hanging off at the ends that, uh, that makes you happy. So, we have that and we could start attaching rings this way to where it's making a little bit of a weave like that so we're going to take this off and now from here instead of using closed rings we would actually be opening them and putting there's one oops and there's two so this is going to use this is going to use a lot of these rings uh, a lot of the little ones at least for sure so I'm adding two sets of two to each of these one large rings. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll meet you guys back here for the next step. Okay, I would also like to point out if I had thought ahead at all, um, I totally could have had these rings prepped and then just hooked them on when I'm joining the main circle together. But um, I wanted to show you guys, at least for me, what it looks like when I'm designing a piece. So during the designing phase, it is not streamlined, it is not efficient, it is not necessarily um, a very good way of going about it if I were like producing a whole bunch of these um, and they were all gonna be similar and like kind of mass producing. Oh gosh, even that's just pretty. I just love the way rings look, you guys, like the chainmail rings themselves, oh, much happy. Um, but, this is what it looks like when I'm designing a piece. So um, I just wanted to share my process with you guys to kind of normalize. You don't have to like be good at something to do something. Um, and so we're going to hook through two from this side and then two from the other side. And then we're going to close it. And you could work on the bobble or off the bobble. Just whatever floats your boat. Pit, taken out another pinch of rings. And now again, two from this side and two from this side. And I think this itself makes a nice little like snowy, lacy looking snowflake and oh y'all we can incorporate beads on this i'm gonna have to rummage and find some beads that would be nice those are some nice beads <laughs> and also another thing that i like about this is it's based off of the oriental style chainmail weaves that are like like the japanese or oriental uh four in one um 12 in one six in one eight in one there's like a whole bunch of them by all sorts of different names but typically if you google the weave names um most commonly you're gonna find a uh, japanese like it'll have the title japanese and then 12 and one or four and one or things like that now 
as far as the terminology and stuff goes, it's just like the half Persian three in one. Like, isn't it doesn't have anything to do with Persia. I don't know why it's called that. Um, but it's just I'm just giving you guys the information that I have. So coming through doing this like that. Doing that like this. There we go. Okay. And so now it's sitting like that. Kind of looks like a little snowflake. That's pretty cool. Ooh, what we could do here too is we could taper off. Oh, I think that's what we might do, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna pull it off of our bobble. And let's see. Lay it out like this. And this is in a 16 gauge 5 16 inch ring coming off of each point. Just like that. And then what would the next size down be? Mm, that's not quite enough of a difference. Let me rummage. I think I have um, some 16 gauge 1 4 inch in another bag. I do, and it's actually left over from whenever Randy and I used to coil and cut our own rings. We don't anymore because, man, it is hard on my hands. Like, I don't have a whole lot of, like, machinery machinery for it. Um, like, we just had a ringinator, which was really good, but we were doing so much stuff that it's, um, we decided it was better to just buy our rings outside of the house. Because, man, it just, it butchered my hands. So, that is how that's coming along. And now what we would do here is I would be using two rings to join each of these. So you may have the preference for just closing your large rings. And then opening your small rings. and joining them together that way. Both ways are correct. I truly don't feel like one way is better than another. I think it depends entirely on the project and on the person, uh, the artisan weaving it. So there is no right or wrong, so long as you're still getting the end result and things are structural. Because um, you know, as soon as I say, well, there's no right or wrong, I really do feel like there is Sometimes there's very distinctly wrong ways of doing things, and I'm going to demonstrate real quick what I feel like is a, a wrong way, and I'll explain why as well. So if you take a ring, if you take a chainmail ring and open it like this, whenever you come in to close it, you still have... A nice round ring. If you take a ring and open it this way and then try to weave your things together and then try to come in and close it. Even if you come in and use the same technique as initially, your rings just, it's not as, it's losing some of its structural integrity. And then what if you need to come in and take that ring off again, and then again, and then again, and then again, which as some of you know, this is not uncommon. Now this is a dead soft aluminum, so it's actually, <laughs> it's holding up really well. Um, if I were using like steel or something like that, uh, our ring would be absolutely jank and probably have broken by now. So that's something that when, I, that when I'm teaching uh, in person, I try to highly discourage because I don't feel like it gets very good results. If you're doing it and you're getting good results, then carry on. <laughs> um, but I, I, I choose not to. And whenever I teach, I try to encourage folks to uh, take a different route. But that's just me, y'all. So I am going to... 
I think I have a personal preference to attaching the small rings first, like closing them. So I've got those two attached. But the reason I think I like this better, just to explain my perspective to y'all, is I have more room on a large ring to open up and hold with my pliers, especially once stuff starts getting a little bit more ring dense. So I've added my two small rings on, and then I'm going to hook through here, and I still have all of this space that I can very comfortably hold with my pliers. And so that's why I like adding the small rings the way that I tend to. And then just using my large rings as the uh, open. Okay, so I am going to continue going the rest of the way around into this snowflake pattern. And then I'll meet you all right back here. Okay, I also wanted to show you all how I kind of, whenever I'm getting into, let's call it production mode, and I'm going to be doing a lot of the same thing, or maybe I'm going to be making a whole bunch of these ornament covers uh, for in our booth or on our website. I have our rings set up from large to small for tapering off of the tips. So this is our 16 gauge 5 16 and this is our 16 gauge 1 4 inch. And then these are our 18 gauge 5 30 seconds that I've closed and I'm just adding them onto our medium sized ring. And then I like to pick that up. And once those closed rings are already on there and uh, all of the units is what my partner Randy and I call them, all the units are prepared, <clears throat> then I can come through and just just weave it and I know it, it I don't know if it actually saves any time or makes things go faster but it really feels like it and sometimes I'd rather do something that feels like it's faster and it doesn't feel like just a trudge um like even if it isn't necessarily faster I mean if it's at if it's tacking on hours then you know I'm going to reconsider uh but if it's more fun one way why not do it that way coming through, laying all those down. I do feel like this is a very, very beginner-friendly chainmail project that just makes a fun little... And just like in our other ornament cover videos, you could do something like this for um, like decorating a bottle or like uh, a bobble, like it doesn't have to be a holiday ornament. just chainmail is life <laughs> like chainmail everything so there we are with that and now we can attach our charms to the tips if we want it also looks like something it would look really cool to like have something like hanging in between let's we'll see if we can't find something for that but for, just for the sake of starting out Keep it kind of simple, maybe. And I'm just using one ring to attach the snowflakes to the rest of it, because that is all that will fit through our tip there. Though oftentimes, let's see which I prefer. We could use one of the 18 gauge 5 seconds, or we could use two of these, the Ring Lord uh, 20 gauge 1 8 inch stainless steel. Just to compare them side by side, see which we, if we like one better than the other. Oh my gosh, y'all, I just had an idea. What if we made some of these for on pumpkins? Ah, for like Halloween and stuff? No, that would be amazing. Okay, so I'm going to have to try that next year. Um, That's just me, though. But like, wouldn't it look so cute with their stumpy little pumpkin stems poking out the top? And it's all metal, so like if the pumpkin gets all like rotted and weird, you can still just hose it off. <laughs> okay, so probably technically no difference, but I just like the look of the two rings better than the one ring. Again, that is just me. You do you. And then we're 
we're going to take this. And I am going to show you guys an option for if you want to add like a super cute little something in here in the side. So we're going to need 10 of these rings opened. Now these ones, it doesn't matter. I'd have to open them either way because the charm has a closed loop. But yeah, like a little pumpkin one with like little autumn leaves hanging off of it or like little spider charms or little skulls. Eee, that'd be so cute. Or little glow in the dark like resin crystals. I know, like I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm. It's still, <laughs> it's still like Christmas at the time of recording, and I am already like excited for next Halloween. <sighs> Thinking happy Halloween thoughts. Okay, I have no idea how many that is that I just did because I was thinking, well, Halloween thoughts. Um, but we will see where it gets us. And even these two 20 gauge are kind of snug fitting through the loop on the charm. There they are. I was like, where did my other charms go? And I don't know if I'd mentioned this already, but I love this uh, style of ornament cover because it lets so much of the color of the ornament come through. So while we could be making this out of bright or anodized aluminum or just whatever makes us happy, um, it's still, we can make 10 that are exactly the same and then put them on different colored ornaments and they still look unique. But help maybe help everything look cohesive though. <laughs> so everything keeps kind of like shifting around. That's okay. Hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and join these other three, and then I'll meet you back here for adding in a little bit of something something. Okay, so I have gone through and started adding a little Mobius flower to the kind of center section of each dangly bit of the snowflake so I am going to show you how to do that. So we are going to, we are using our um, 16 gauge 3 eighths of an inch so it's a little bit smaller than these guys. We could use the same uh, 16 gauge 7 sixteenths as what we were using but I like the little bit of variation uh, and I'm kind of low on those other ones so um, options are good. So we have three one is closed, two are open. We're going to put the closed on one of the open and then close that one. And now we're going to take the third ring and hook it through both of the closed. And then we're going to close that again. And now sometimes whenever it lays there, it doesn't really look like anything. If you flip over that top ring, then it kind of looks like a little Mobius rosette. And then we are using 18 gauge 3 16 inch rings to join. And again, guys, this is why I really like this um, kit because it has so many different ring sizes that you can really experiment and get some wonderful variation. And uh, it's just cool. Hooking the 18 gauge 3 16 through all three of our large rings of the Mobius flower. And then I'm just hooking it onto this ring here. One on either side. So if you can see in this pattern, we have this ring that connects to the snowflake. So small, medium, and large. And then small, medium, and large. And so we're going to join this Mobius flower over to this ring here. And so we will make sure that ring is nice and open. Hook through all three of the Mobius flower and then the one large ring. And I'm just rotating so that I can get my left hand in and close it. And that is how that has come together, which I just love. I really like that. 
the little very very cool so now we've got a nice little jangly ornament we could hang more drops off of those mobius flowers if we wanted um but i feel like maybe with the charms like well it's a cool look we really need to see this from the side don't we okay so while it's a cool look having the charms hanging down like that um i feel like if i did more charms hanging down here maybe if i did a different style of charm that'd be pretty cool um or oh if we did little glass teardrops or little like faceted like swarovski crystal beads or something that would be really really neat but uh yeah i just kind of like it y'all and that's just how it looks don't really look like much of anything but all you gotta do is bloop over an ornament poke it a bit make sure it fits good and ah let's go Ooh, we need to make a wire hook okay so for our wire hook i have a piece of 18 gauge scrap and my mandrel pliers and i'm going to make just a little loop whoa blurry just make a, a loop on the tip of the wire with the smallest mandrel head and then I'm going to flip it around and bring it in and fold it around like this and you could add some beads along the length here if you're into that or you could do like a little bit of wire wrapping or something. Mm, I don't really have, well, here we go. I can take one of these Celtic Knot coin beads that we had out from another recent project. And something that you can do is if you don't want your bead just whoop, sliding down all the way like that, you could use a crimp bead crimp it onto the wire, put the bead on there, and then put another crimp bead, or we can get some of our wire wrapping going. Um, and we've got about five inches of wire past our hook, so I, I should have measured it initially, but we have our bead on there. I am just going to take this and wrap it around. And then I'm going to feed the wire up and through I'm going to grab my bent nose pliers and just kind of cinch that around. And there's nothing really stopping this bead from spinning, so maybe a round bead might have been a good idea. But, meh, it is what it is. It's actually kind of fun that the bead spins, I think, but uh, if you don't want it to spin like that, then we can take it and loop it around on the back side, but then it gives it a little bit more of a distinct back side. And from here, I'm going to make a little hook, same as on the other side, that's the tip. And then coming to the thickest part of the mandrel pliers, I'm just going to bend around. Oh, I actually didn't have enough wire. Oh no. So here we can hook the smaller end onto our ornament and then hook the larger end onto the tree. So that's pretty neat. A little messy, but uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Alrighty y'all, so this is how our ornament came out. And I am just loving it. It's so cute. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know. I think I love it. I really do. Especially with the one we had made in a previous video. Um, if y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave those down below. I really do love hearing from you guys. Um, if you follow along with our videos and would like to share pictures of what you've made, please uh, tag us. You can do hashtag craft along with Vaughn or tag Back to Earth Creations on Instagram, or you can even post it to our wall over on Facebook. And um, I just, I love seeing what y'all make. Y'all inspire me all the time. And um, 
If you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please consider joining our Happy Crafter Club, where we do exclusive coupons, behind the scenes content, live stream after parties from our Friday live streams, um, booty boxes, just, just a whole mess of stuff over there. And it's a great way to help, uh, you know, support the creation of more free tutorials. So thank you guys again so much for hanging out with us and I will see you next time. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>